morning and welcome back to Lemon Lane Cottage. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Patty and I garden in Zone 10, Southern California. Welcome. Today we're going to talk a little bit about shade gardening, which is kind of new for me. I have always gardened in full sun, but a few years ago we planted this row of trees behind me, which has provided me with this wonderful um, new garden, new thing to learn, shade gardening. So right now it is full of things that I have transplanted from around the garden. I picked up a couple of things at my local big box store, but today I am going to be working on the area in front. If you can see behind me, there's a peak of the foxgloves. I actually started those from seed last year and put them in in the fall and so now this is my first flush of blooms from them. They are huge. I'm getting very excited to see what it all will look like, but I will go into the details of everything that's in there. I wasn't gonna do this video until the weekend, but um, I just realized we're running out of weekends in April and I really wanna show you um, the urban homestead slash barnyard garden where all of my veg is growing. Um, and I want to do that probably this weekend. So this is just a bonus snuck in video with the shade garden. Um, I may add a few little things. I took a trip to TJ Maxx with a couple of girlfriends and picked up some fun things for out on the patio because I'm having a couple of friends over this weekend. Not sure if I'll get to that. If I do, I will share it in this video. If not, I will share it in a future video. The birds are extra noisy this morning. I hope you can hear me over them. Let me just show you real quick before um, I get to planting. I picked up a few things at my local um, independent nursery that I'm going to add to the shade garden to the front to help fill it out. I hope this is all making sense. All right, so I actually already have this is bugleweed. Um, I know it has another name. If you know, a junga, that's what it is, a junga. I have a few that my mom gave me um, in the garden already, but I like their spreading habit. I need, I am a big proponent of dense planting for less weeding. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that is what I do. So anything that's gonna spread in the front, like this bugle weed, um, I'm all for it. Plus it gets these really pr pretty little tiny purple flowers, and I have a couple in bloom that are already planted. So I will show you those, but I got a six pack of that. I also got this, because uh, to me, shade gardening has always represented a lot of green, so I'm really looking for ways to add color. And I know some of you who are seasoned um, shade gardeners, you're probably saying, no, no, there's a lot of color in a shade garden. There's a few plants on my wish list, but not in my budget right now. And that's just the reality of how I garden, how I've always gardened. And, and it actually um, teaches you patience, but it makes you appreciate more as things come into bloom and as they get larger, that kind of stuff. So you will see um, if you subscribe, and I hope that you do, that a lot of my stuff will start small and we kind of have to wait and imagine and all of that stuff before it really comes into the beauty of say, my perennial garden which i shared with you last weekend and i will go ahead and link that for you um, that has been established we have been in this house for 13 years and i would say almost from day one at least season one i have been working that garden so big difference between this one that i just started last fall so anyways this is a phlox i don't know hope that focuses for you oops i guess if i showed you the flower that would be better so this is a phlox that will go right in the front. Um, it says part sunshade, and this actually gets a nice blast of morning uh, sun and then afternoon shade, which is like ideal. I don't have very many places like that in my garden, um, but this will go in along the front. And then a dear friend just gifted me this gorgeous cyclamen. And I normally put cyclamen in pots because it likes the shade, it likes the cooler weather. I've never actually tried to grow it in the ground. So for me in a pot, it will um, t 
totally disappear and then come back. I usually plant them around Christmas. I have red ones and they will, I will think they're dead, but then the leaves will pop up in uh, the winter, very early spring, and I will get a new flush of flowers. But I am curious and let me know in the comments if you know, if I put this in the ground, will the leaves stay in ideal condition? So this is my experiment. So this is also going in the shade garden. So that is what I'm gonna share with you today. I'm so glad that you're back. Welcome to all you new, all of you who have just subscribed. I don't normally talk this fast, but I wanna get this in because I do wanna get to gardening before the sun comes out. So I have a little bit of weeding to do um, in the shade garden. I'll explain this to you in the video, but the shade garden is actually the shade garden which goes into a tropical garden um, which goes into just a patch of oh my goodness star jasmine well the star jasmine my husband just moved from another part of the yard and the weeds from the rain and the spring have taken over it so at some point i've got to get to that and for those of you who have been following for following for a while that was going to be my husband's railroad garden um, but he had it set up he had it all leveled and just it just didn't work as far as you know going up I don't know I'm not a trained person but it, he just couldn't get it to work properly and I, so he ended up taking it down and he's moving it into his man cave garage and once it's done if he lets me I will share that um, in a video because I know some of you were curious as to what that looked like can't say he'll never put a shade, uh, train garden out in the yard. He's done it a couple of times, but for now, that is just um, going to be the tropical garden. So with that, I am going to go ahead and get to planting these plants that I have, get everything leveled out. You will see this is the only part of the yard that is still under construction, um, meaning it still needs a little retaining kind of wall built into it. But we're gonna ignore that because this is a new garden and we need to move forward. We can't always wait for everything to be just perfect before we get going. So, promise, that is all the chit chat. I wanna thank you again for stopping by. Let's go ahead and get to work and then I will show you a full tour of my one-year-old shade garden. Just for a little perspective, the shade garden sets at the rear of our property back by where the chicken coops, rabbit hutch, and my barnyard veggie garden is. So this is the area I'm going to be working in today. I'm going to put the ajunga and the phlox just along the front here. You can see I have a little bit of a junga already coming back um, that I put in last year and I thought had been scratched up by the chickens, but apparently it's pretty tough because it's coming back. So let me get my shovel and let me get to clearing this area out. doing here is just loosening up the dirt. I will come back in and add some rabbit um, poop, rabbit droppings for fertilizer and then just a little bit of compost right on the top so that my plants going in have good rich soil um, for the best possible start. to go along the area that I'm planting and just dig the holes up where I think I'm going to plant the plants. Um, that just gives me kind of a visual and then I adjust as I'm going and actually planting. In my flower gardens, I will use a granular slow release fertilizer. Um, in this case, I'm using Osmocote just because it gives me, um, it gives the plants a long lasting boost. I do not use it um, in my vegetable garden. I try as hard as I can to be totally organic in anything that we're ingesting, including the herbs. 
but for a strictly flower garden like this is, I will go ahead and put a slow release in there. See, I'm kind of staggering these kind of a little serpent serpentine pattern and I have them about 12 to 18 inches apart because I know that they will spread if this was a smaller area and I wanted the wow factor right away I would probably um, put them closer together just so that they would fill in faster but like I said with this shade garden this is a perennial bed which means it's it's going to um, keep growing for the next few years at least and i want to give it room to spread out plus it really does help um, your budget when you plant the plants a little further away and can just give them time to do what they're going to do ahead and tuck the cyclamen back here um, right in front of this hydrangea and lemongrass. I'm saving this special spot right in the front for some hellebore. I have wanted some for such a long time but they are very pricey but I'm saving room so that I can get three to five um, in the next year or so. And I'm just going to add the flocks in front of that just along the front of the bed because I know it has a low growing habit and will also spread just like the other side where I have the bugle weed. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and I'll come back and give you a peek at exactly how it looks like when it's all done. Water this in I am very pleased with it I will come back in and mulch the whole thing probably this weekend it's gonna take me a couple of bags um, and I have to run to the nursery to grab that but all in all I'm very pleased with how it turned out as I always do just enjoy a quick peek at the shade garden and I will be back and go through each plant one by one Oh, you know it's true, no matter where I go, I'm calling home. 
now let me tell you what I have planted in here. Obviously, you know the cyclamen, and I am so pleased with that little pop of white here in the front of the bed. And this is the phlox that I put in. I think it's gonna look pretty. I also have several foxglove. Some of these were transplanted um, from a different part of the yard last fall, and then the smaller ones, which are just getting set to grow and bloom, were from seed last year. So foxglove is biennial, which means it's usually not going to bloom for you till the second year. That little spiky plant has a purple flower and it gets quite tall. I cannot remember. It's a blue, blue something or other. And I keep looking for it. Once it blooms, I'm going to have you guys help me to identify it. There in the front, that is where I put the bugle weed, and it's gonna really, that purplish kind of foliage on it, I think is gonna really look wonderful. And here is that little tiny purple flower I was telling you about. It gets, um, the bugle weed will get on it. And I like how the leaves can go from the purplish tint to the green tint. This is in the back of the garden. Most of these plants, like I said, have been moved from other places in the garden. I have Elstromeria, which is Peruvian Lily, and it has little tubers that will spread. I put some of that in here. All of the hydrangeas that you see in here, and I think I have four, maybe five, were from the $5 bin at Lowe's, I believe. That is Amandavia. I have three clumps of lemongrass because it's supposed to help with the mosquitoes and I do get them in this back area here. It looks a little haggard but because I just moved it, but it will fill out. That is an azalea that has actually been in four different places in this yard. More hydrangeas getting ready to bloom. These are the smaller foxglove that I put in from seed last year. You can see I have a couple of hostas and some columbine. Now the columbine is a surprise. I had probably six clumps in here. The chickens got to them. I see that two of them survived. Here's one of them. Isn't that a pretty little pink flower? I just love columbine. It will get quite tall, so it won't always be dwarfed back here. That in the back there is actually a hibiscus. People will ask me, does it do well in the shade? And yes, here in zone 10 it does. Um, it doesn't really like intense heat, so it gets morning sun and evening shade and it seems to be very happy. I actually put another one in transitioning into the tropical garden. That is a lily of some sort, and I do not know the exact name. I wish I could help you. Maybe when it blooms, we'll be able to identify it better. This is actually the transition to what will be the tropical garden, which my husband has been wanting to put in for a while, and I will share that, of course, when it goes in. So that is the shade garden. I hope you enjoyed this tour. This garden is going to change so much because it's new. My plan is to show you each section of the garden every month so we can see how it grows. You can see what I've added. You can see how when one flower fades, another comes in. Come back on Saturday. I will be doing a complete tour of the veggie garden and the urban homestead area with the chickens and the rabbits and all of that fun stuff. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, thanks for stopping by.